Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I have two bonsai shows coming up this fall. At the end of this month, I have the Kitchener Waterloo Bonsai Society's Fall Show. And then two weeks later, I have the Toronto Bonsai Society's Fall Show and Sale also. One of the trees I'm considering for the fall shows is my little cedar spirit tree. It's grown really well this summer. Today, I'm going to clean it up and get it ready for the fall shows. My styling intention for this tree is to have it look like the real life little cedar spirit tree that lives on the north shore of Lake Superior. The real life tree is living in a very harsh environment. It gets beaten back every year by the storms of Lake Superior. Right now the tree looks very lush, the branches have elongated, but they're very beautiful and flowing. I would hate to cut it back, making it more compact. I'll save that for the winter time, and then in spring it'll begin to grow once again. So this isn't the final styling for the tree, but I think the tree looks very nice at the moment. So I'm going to do a bit of tidy up work on the branches, but I'm going to leave it very full and green looking. Some of the branches on the tree, like this lowest branch, could be shortened, but I think that would take away from the tree. I think it looks better, nice and flowing and natural. It looks like it has never been pruned in its life, and that's a nice kind of natural look or a nice way to show a cedar. If you prune them all back short and tidy, I think it, uh, it, it changes the look of it, and I think this is a you know, a more natural look for a fall show. I planted this tree as a root over rock. So you can see the roots on top of the rock. Now the rock is, you know, probably 50% hidden by this moss here, which I may have to thin. The trunk has a lot of character on it. There is a dead section to the trunk here where I could peel the bark away. But the trunk has lots of character and, you know, the basic branch structure is in place. So I, I think it's looking quite nice. It's not a uh, one of those trees where you go, whoa, look at the thickness of the trunk. But I think it has a lot of interest. So I think it'll look good in a show. The tree and rock are planted in a pot made by Sophie from Cambridge, Ontario. The pot is fairly large, but it has to be to hold the rock because the rock is even larger. Uh, otherwise, I have the rock sticking up too much, and, and maybe someday I will raise the rock a bit, but I think if you have, you know, too much rock, it, it just maybe overpowers the planting. So I've kind of tried to make a balance between the pot, the rock, and the tree. And I think with the foliage filling out like this, it's a little more balanced than when I initially planted it in this pot, but I wouldn't say it's perfect, but uh, it's quite good, I think. I'm stepping back looking at the tree. Now, at the moment, it looks a little shaggy, and, and cedars tend to look that way. Uh, they don't grow in nice kind of foliage pads or anything, unless you wire them all in place. So there are some branches like up top here that are sticking out of the profile that could be pruned back. Some of the ones in the apex here that are just sticking up. I'd be looking for more flowing branches. Even though the styling intent on this tree isn't to have flowing branches, it's to be contorted and twisted like it's the branches being bent down and broken by snow, high winds. So I will be cleaning up the overall profile of the tree, but I'll be keeping all my kind of good branches or flowing branches, trying to strike a balance between, you know, the nice green growth and the profile of the overall profile of the tree. All right, I'm going to begin the pruning now. So 
there's a look at the tree. So this branch here sticks out as being, you know, jutting out of the profile. Kind of ruins the miniature appearance of the tree. So I'm going to prune it to a downward facing frond here. Right here. Shortening it right back. Taking that off. That'll certainly help the profile. There's a branch kind of sticking up here. I can reduce this one back to here. There's a little bit of browning on the tip here. So once I've got it pruned up, I'll look at that. I'll pinch out all the spots that have gone a little brown. There's a branch sticking up here. It's a rocket branch. You can see how vigorous it is. Sticking straight up, I'll take that one right out because I have nice kind of cascading branches here. There's a dead leaf in here. There's a branch here that comes from the back and part of it's growing over top of this branch. So I don't think I need that one at all. I'll prune it back short to here. Here I go. And, you know, I'll encourage it to grow more out behind this branch out the front. So that solved a lot of problems on this side of the tree. There'll still be a bit of work to go. Uh, you can see on this branch, again, it's kind of growing straight up here. And it's very long and vigorous. I have better flowing branches coming off to the side. So again, I'll reduce this back. Not taking it off totally at the moment, but maybe in the future. Like maybe even today. But So I'm going to prune it off here. Like that. There's a dead branch under here that just comes right off. Another one there. Now there's one sticking up here. Again, straight up. I'll just reduce that one back. Keeping my, you know, my profile looking good. Okay, let's start on this side. I think this shoot coming up here is getting a little too vigorous and the branch is too long. I do like the one underneath here, so I just want to shorten this one back. So I'll go to here. And this one to here. Kind of reducing it. Now, is that still too long? There's the front. Hmm. I'll leave it at that for now. There's one sticking straight up here I can reduce back to here. There's one kind of coming back here. I'll want to reduce that. And then this one's jutting up. Uh, again, it's a very vigorous branch coming off of here and it needs to be reduced back it's just too long so a good point on that branch would be I think right here we'll try it here like that and see how it looks well that's better for sure and then I'll have to prune this one back it's kind of jutting out of the profile Then I have a branch back here that's kind of a little long. So I'll prune the tip off here. Like that, and this tip off here. I think that's looking better. So this is the time of year on cedars where your older foliage will start going yellow and falling off and you can see some of the you know the ones that were getting shaded out here were going yellow so I'm just kind of picking some of those out there's another one that was just lying there and this happens every year on cedars it sheds the weaker branches and keeps the stronger ones Okay, um, 
I'm thinking on this branch I've got some good kind of flowing cascading branches but then there's one sticking up here I can prune back like that and then there's a really vigorous one here sticking up and again it's just too vigorous so I'll prune it off taking that off so that helps a lot kind of shaping the sides the profile of the tree uh, I think this is too long here. I'll have to prune it back. Nice branches, they're, they're just too long, so... I won't prune them right back, but I will... prune enough of them off just to shorten it. Like that. Now, how is it looking? Yeah, I think the overall profile has been improved. I think it's... Looking a little more, cedars kind of grow in a, a rounded triangular shape. Here is an overall look at the tree now, so I'm just having a look. I have some hanging foliage down here, which I like, but I've got this one is kind of interfering with this one. So I'm wondering if I should shorten one of them. Cut one off. I think I'll shorten the one hanging down, kind of redirecting it out this way, out this way, and then shorten this one to give it room. So here I go. I'm going to prune it to here. And then this one I will prune to here. prune this part of it right back. Now, does that help? That helps. It's not quite as noticeable now. It looks a little more flowing and natural. I think there's a branch here. It's a beautiful branch going in a good direction. I think it just needs the tip pruned off. Maybe just getting a little long. And maybe a little tip pruning up here. Here. Maybe here. Here. Well, I think it's looking quite good. It still looks very natural. There may be a little tip pinching I can do, but I think it's kind of got the profile in check. And again, I'll be doing a, you know, a pruning to shorten everything for the next growing season, probably over the winter. I'm just rotating around now. I've got a bit of branch interference back here. I think this one could definitely be shortened like that and this one I'll just take that downward facing branch off which was interfering with the other one like that there's a bit of room in there now that looks much better there's some I, I think you know, I've got this lower branch and there's a few fronds hanging down here which are nice but you know do I want this one from up here laying on top of the other branch uh, without it it definitely looks better without it I, I think that one's got to come off I'll just shorten it there's still a little bit of foliage on it, like that. Pitch back some of these ones hanging down. This one's a weak one, I can take that right out. It's almost, it's gone yellow. It's dying back. 
You can see the tip of this one's weak. It's needs to be pinched out. And I think I need to shorten that whole branch. It's just too much. Yeah, too many branches hanging down there. Just improve the separation between the branches. There's a little space there. And I do have a branch coming from way in here that's kind of coming out and blocking the view of the trunk and it kind of grows in a weird direction. And obviously it was reaching for light out here. Yeah. Um, I think it's a case of reducing it back and seeing how it looks. Push it back further. Now it's better. This one could be just pruned back a bit. And there's a brown tip on here I'll pinch out. Like that. There's a couple of branches here that are kind of crossing, growing in towards the tree. Um, I could definitely cut them back or take them off. It would open up some space here to see these trunk lines behind. I, I think I'd better prune them off. There and here, like that. that. That helps get some separation there. I've got a branch growing towards the inside here. Hmm. I think I better leave it. If I make it too, look, you know, I don't want it to look too structured and pruned at this present moment. I want it to look very natural. I think if I start fooling around with proper branch pruning, it'll look a bit like it was just pruned up rather than growing naturally. Okay. Just cleaning out some weak foliage in there. This one. That one. The yellow foliage. Footage. Okay, let's keep rotating around. There's a branch here that's kind of sticking up. I think that needs pruning back to a flowing branch to the outside, like that. There's a very strong branch coming out the back. I think I just need to take the tip off. It's getting a little too far out the back. I don't this one back and this one back and this one back and some more weak branches under here I'll just pull those out they're just ready to come off they're just shaded out weak there's another one here Here's the tree from the front. Ah, it's looking, looking not bad. Yeah, it gives me the impression of a tree that over the summer it's grown really, really well. And then, you know, my winter pruning will be like nature beating it back, all that new growth. Only the strong will survive and it gets more compact again. And then in spring, it spends the whole summer growing again to look like this. And then it gets beaten back over the winter. So. You know, I'll duplicate that cycle uh, that the real life little cedar spirit tree sees of growth in the summer and then beaten back in the winter. I mentioned in my last video on cedar trees that this rough bark on here makes a tree look really old, but it's actually the opposite. This is more of an immature tree and eventually all this flaky bark does flake off and you get a smooth, finer textured bark underneath. 
and the real life little cedar spirit tree has that you know mature bark of a cedar on it that's smooth and just has little uh, yeah little sections of bark uh, well I'll show you a cedar tree in our backyard to show you an example here's a cedar tree in our backyard and you can see this is kind of what the mature bark looks like on it you know it's fairly smooth it's not all flaky it just has fine kind of vertical ridges that follow the live veins of the tree you can see how they go around the branches here you can see it go around this branch yeah so you know depending on the the live veins of the tree the the smooth bark can be quite flowing and twisty on some trees I would hate to take off this rough bark now even though you know you can see there's some nice live veins developing on the tree it has a lot of character this trunk there's deadwood sections uh, right now you can't see the difference between the deadwood and the live wood because it's got bark on it and yeah you know, there's not much distinction but I think that's work for the winter time I'm going to leave it just kind of rough like it is for now I'm going to do the landscape work on the tree now. Uh, this was intended to be a land water penjing, so this was the shoreline of Lake Superior. You can see it's filled in with moss. There's a lot of liverwort there. And the moss on this side is just fluffed up. It's really thick. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside, look on the computer when I repotted this, and see what the stone in that looks like. And then I'll decide if I'm going to prune this moss or strip it off and start a new layer. Uh, yeah, I, I want to see if this looks better than when I planted it, or does it look better having more stone exposed. I checked out the repotting video on this tree from last March. Um, there was snow on the ground when I repotted this tree, and boy does it look different now. It's uh, certainly filled out up top, and the root system here was just bare against the rock but the moss is filled in and I think that looks quite nice um, you can see both sections of the rock here and I, I think I think this moss is looking good with a tidy up I think it needs that kind of the contrast between the moss here and what I'll do is make this water once again so I'll peel this moss off but I'll keep the moss on the roots here. I think that looks really good. And maybe some moss on the shoreline also. In the comments section on that repotting video, some people do not like this new pot. Um, and maybe it's because it's light colored and maybe it's a little large or deep, but I think, you know, the tree will grow into this pot. I think it's, uh, I think it's a good, pot it's deep the roots will grow nicely in here it's clay it'll keep the roots a little cooler and it gives the tree room to grow and get larger and yeah so I, I think it's a good overall pot the relief work at the bottom of the pot suits this Lake Superior planting there's rocks and a bit of grass and that so I think it's a suitable pot here is a look at what I took off the tree so just kind of a light trimming, getting some of those branches that were sticking out of the profile pruned back. I'm going to start the landscape work now. My first step is to remove the moss that's overhanging the lip of the pot. A pot is like a picture frame around the tree, and if you have you know part of it covered up, it just looks kind of messy. So I'll just come with my curved scissors and kind of follow the profile of the pot and trim it back and there may be some blending work I'll have to do to kind of get rid of that sharp edge here and even though you know the tree is always viewed from the front view it shows in that it's always nice to make the back of your planting just as nice as the front get everything trimmed up so it's looking good so now you can see where I pruned away the moss I've got kind of a 
sharp edge there. That will green up. That's why I'm doing all this work in advance of this show. However, I don't want it straight up at the side, so I'm going to do a little blending, which will mean some moss pruning. Yeah, a little bit of pruning just to round it down to the edge of the pot so it doesn't look so much like a 90 degree edge. And again, you know, this will all green up, hopefully looking good at showtime. And this kind of pruning is something, if you have the time over the summer, you can keep up on it. If not, you do it in advance of the shows so it's looking good at showtime. And it's fall right now, so moss tends to grow really well because we usually get, you know, cooler temperatures, we get heavy dews in the morning, and moss tends to grow well in the fall. I'm looking at, you know, the trees here, the rock kind of steps down, and then I got a blob here, so I need to sculpt this moss to maybe look like steps going down. So I will do that. I'm going to prune it back a bit. It's a little tall here. Kind of keeping it green if I can. Not taking it too far back on this initial step. And then I need to come in and create a step. So I will come and prune this section off shorter and I may lose my green color in the moss in this section but again hopefully it'll grow in let me see how that's looking that's looking better it's kind of a looks kind of more in contour with the rocks or it more harmonious with the rocks now, um, it's a little even looking, so I've got to introduce, you know, you don't want it look, looking like a, a mowed lawn. So I'm going to have to take sections of moss away. And I'll use the tweezers for that. So I will come in and, you know, I have rock here, so I can take a bit away here. Exposing some of the rock like that. A bit over here. Like that, that looks nice. Uh, up here I can expose some sections of rock like that and then I think I want a break in here I don't want it too even so I'll pull some out like that a big chunk I pulled out but it looks good so you can already see it it's looking looking more natural now around here it looks like a wall so I need to break away some of that and I think I don't want a, like a line of moss coming down here so I think more in this area taking it away and if you pull away moss you know too much and you go oh I wish I didn't pull that clump out you can always plant another clump of moss there It'll provide a bit of variation a different kind of moss but again, you want to do all this work in advance of the show. Um, at the U.S. National Show, there was several trees that I could tell were just mossed up like days before the show. And um, it wasn't a good mossing job. I'll put it at that. It didn't look bad or anything. It just could have looked better. It's rare to see a good mossing job on a tree. I'm going to take away some of this moss. Okay, so that's looking better. This clump out here stands out as being a little even. I gotta 
divided, I think. Make two clumps out of one clump. And you know, your moss can really change the scale of the planting. Having small clumps of moss here and there can really add to the miniature appearance of your landscape. So you can see that looks better. It's a little more detailed looking, some separation. I would say even here I could pull some moss out. Again, separating it a bit. And, you know, by the time the show comes along, it'll have filled in these spaces a bit with shorter moss and it'll look hopefully quite natural. And again, back here, it's just like, you know, a layer cake. I need some variation. I think I can take some of the moss away by the rock back here, exposing a bit more of the rock. So all my trees that I prep for shows, I try and keep them in the greenhouse so that birds and squirrels don't come in and kick all that moss off and wreck your landscape. So you got to protect them until showtime. If you know you have problems like that in your backyard, and I think most people do. Most people have birds that come in and they take off all the moss looking for worms. So you can have this perfectly manicured landscape and then the next day it's not there and you don't want to have to redo it all again. So if you can protect it, I would. And this time of the year the greenhouses are quite cool, especially if you put them on the floor so it won't hurt these hardy trees in the greenhouse. We're getting some pretty low temperatures at night now. No frost in the forecast, thank goodness, but I mean, it will be coming. Usually in the first two weeks of October is when we get our first frost, so less than a month from now, I think I'll be dealing with protecting the tropicals and beginning that trek into the plant room for the winter. Okay, so it's looking more like a land water penging. I think I'll put this moss on here just to kind of complete this section and then see what to do about my my shoreline. I've got a few clumps of moss here. It's not real thin, but I think it'll do the trick. I hope. I hope it just doesn't look like the moss I took off. Okay. I think I had enough moss. Okay, I better water that moss and then pick out all my little pieces of perlite. And there's fertilizer in this water too. I always mix a small amount of fertilizer in my rainwater and fertilize in water at the same time, every time. Okay, that's good. One note about tree preparation for shows. It makes me happier to see a lesser tree well presented, you know, with beautiful moss and everything looking good, than to see a more mature, fantastic specimen tree poorly presented with lichen up the trunk or moss that's hastily applied with no, no rhyme or reason. So, yeah, it, it makes me happy at a show to see a tree really well prepared where the owner took a lot of care to get the tree looking the best it can. Uh, it's better, as I said, than to see a better tree poorly presented. I'm going to start working on the shoreline now. Right now the beach is kind of level and I'm thinking of tapering it down so you see more of the lip of the pot so the beach kind of slopes like you know a beach would and maybe even add some rocks at the base making it look more like a shoreline. So I'll start 
by kind of contouring the sand. Now there are some roots in here that I'll have to cut away. But not many. It's just a few fine roots that have worked their way up over the summer. Now there's not a lot of shoreline showing here, but you know, try and make the best realistic shoreline I can just to represent a shore, the difference between the land and the water. Maybe a little more. Because I will be adding sand, so it'll raise the level a bit more, so I better take away a little more. Yeah, I think that's good there. So I've got to trim all these roots back now. I'll come in with my scissors and just start trimming them away. The rock I used underneath the tree here is a limestone rock. And this was the best rock I had at the time and had a lot of features on it. Since then, we went with Stefan and collected better rocks. Uh, so I do have another root over rock planting plant with the thuja I got from Connor. So that'll be coming this spring. So I need to find some small limestone rocks that match the color and texture of this rock to kind of place around the shoreline. I'm going to try it. If it doesn't look good, well, I'll take them away. But I'm hoping there's a transition from the rock to the sandy beach and to the water. I found some better rocks. They're all limestone. There's one, that, this one's really fancy, but is it too much? This is the question. Is it too much? Um, not really. It looks quite good actually, and it's an interesting rock. It only fits in basically in one position. I don't think I could have it. No, not like that, even though that's this is the cool face of the rock, but yeah, it only really fits in like that. I do like it here. I think it's a good it makes this shoreline look less of a shoreline, but you see that on shorelines, you know, big rocky sections, water in between them. Let me step back and have a look at it. Here it is from the front view. Maybe I'm a little low of the camera, but uh, it kind of shows you the, it balances out the landscape a bit. And maybe too much. Maybe it makes it look more like a mountaintop than a shoreline. Let me try this smaller rock. This is a really nice rock. It's detailed and much smaller. Maybe that would look better. That looks better. It's more balanced. You still see the shoreline. It just provides that counterbalance between the rock up there and one lower. Yeah, I, I think that's better. And then I've got another smaller one. Do I need another rock? Maybe I do. Again, I think it has a transitional effect to the water. I think if I plant this one, put a little moss around them, I think it does the job. I think it's, you know, so I just don't have this sheer drop of roots going to the shoreline. I think it, as I said, provides a bit of transition. I've collected some fine sidewalk moss from the front. So I can put it around the rocks, kind of blending them into the landscape. Then I think I'll add the sand. All right, here I go with the moss. So I just want it in kind of small pieces. Pushing it in around the rocks. So the rocks look like they've been there forever, not just planted today. 
Here's a look now at that work I did around the rocks, kind of integrating them with the landscape. Ah, I think that looks quite good. I'm going to try my light desert colored sand. It's half white industrial sand and half the normal playground sand. So, see if, how it looks. If it's too light, then I can add some darker sand, but I'm going to try it because I do want a bit of a contrast between the landscape and the, you know, the water or the beachfront. Sand here and there. And then I'll give it a water and kind of wash it all in. So I think that's good with the sand. All right, here I go with the water now. Washing all that sand into the landscape. Here's an overall look at the tree, the landscape, the pot. I think it's all looking very good. Uh, next, I have to pick out a stand for it, something to place the tree and the pot on. That will be the difficult part. I'm thinking about what stand to use on this tree. So this tree isn't a very tall tree. It's sort of a small to medium sized tree. So I would need a stand to elevate it up on the table. So I'd need, you know, a stand at least this kind of height. I've got the green of the foliage, the trunk color, the green, the rock, and the pot color. So I think I need something. I don't want my stand the same color as the pot. Otherwise, it'll, the pot would just disappear. There's some reddish color in the, the trunk and the roots on this tree. So a reddish wooden stand would look quite nice under it. Um, so I'll see what I have. I know I have that one reddish stand that Matt made. I'll try it out and see how it looks. Here is a look at the tree on the reddish colored stand. Uh, the stand overpowers the tree for sure. It's not the worst combination in the world, but it's definitely a bit too much stand for the size of the pot in the tree. The color, it's maybe a little too reddish. Um, Yeah, like it would do in a pinch, but I don't think it's... I'm going to try and do better with what I have. Here's a look at the tree on a natural cedar colored stand. Um, both of these stands are made by Matt, so thanks very much, Matt. I think this is better. It's lighter. The color tones in with the tree much better. Um... It's not a bad stand. It would look quite nice at a show on this stand. I think the this would do for sure. So that's my number one pick so far is the cedar stand with a cedar tree on it. Here is a look at the cedar on a maple stand. It's also a stand made by Matt. So I've got a Canadian made stand, Canadian made pot and a Canadian tree. Um, it's okay. It, it's, it would certainly do on this stand, but I think the cedar stand is a better stand. It looks a little lighter. Yeah, I think the cedar stand will be the stand for the cedar tree. Here is a final look at the cedar on the cedar stand. So there'll be a little more show prep in the days before the show, but I'd say basically, you know, this one's ready for the show. It's looking good. And I'm very happy with it. very happy with the progress of this tree over the years. Started out as a tree that had been run over and bent in half. 
I dug it up, planted it, got the roots sorted out, then I put it over top of a rock in a training pot, and then finally into a nice pot by Sophie. So that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.